Hello and welcome back to another video. So it's been heavily requested, well, only by two people, that I should do a tutorial on how to build a steam engine. So in this video I'm just going to show you how to build the crankshaft, uh, basic logic, and all the other things. So to get started, what you want to do is want to place down the pivot. Uh, recommended to have it in open air. Also, get a reference photo of the steam engine you want to build. To get started, just place one block here and get out a velocity pivot. Make sure they're velocity pivots because of the compound, they won't actually move unless you give them a signal. And also, only give electric signal or electric power to this pivot right here. This is going to be the one that actually starts it moving. So I'm actually going to do a pretty weird design. It's going to have like a little counterweight on it. If you know what I mean. So I'm going to get out a 1x2 wedge. Place it down right there, and then get some more wedges. So it's going to create this little counterweight shape here. And then for the other side, it's just going to be a normal bar here. Now keep in mind, this is your center point. It's very important you keep that uh, in your head, because if you don't, then it's not going to work. Now I'm going to build up the bed plate, this is basically the base for your steam engine. And I'm going to make a double piston steam engine. So we're going to copy what we have here, except we're going to make it at top dead center. This is at bottom dead center, and this is at top. Meaning the piston is always on the top here, and the piston is at the bottom here. So that should be the same thing. Looks like it. So we'll place the pivot there. And carry that little supporting piece there. Now we move the bed plate up, and that's your simple crankshaft done. So now we have to start work on the actual connecting rod. Well, actually, let's first do the bearings. So the bearings are pretty simple, just uh, extend the bed plate out a little bit. Get some rocket boosters, or whatever they're called, and place them down like that. These are going to be the bolt carriers. And then what I like to do is get out a one by one window and place it right there, so it gives a little bit of more um, height and it makes a little bit more curved since it is wrapping around a curved piece so I'll just do that on the, all the other pieces and now the bearings are done now for the sides of the bed plate uh, you want to keep in mind the stroke of your piston so at this current point, center is right here, and the maximum point is here. Now if I take some blocks and measure it up to the opposite one, that's about 5 blocks. So that means it extends out 2 blocks in either direction, and so I want to keep a block of air between all the points. So now when this goes over here, it's going to take up these spots here. But it's going to leave a little air gap here so it can actually rotate. Now for the connecting rod. Now I'm going to get out some rockets. I'm going to place a couple down until I'm at least two blocks above uh, the crankshaft. Now that's about five blocks so I place five rockets there. Now for the intermediate hinge here. You can either use this pivot or you can use the velocity pivot. I'm just going to use the regular pivot. Yeah, actually, I'm going to bring this down a little bit since this is already blocked, so it will take up the space or the same amount of space. Now, to actually start building the cylinder, I'm going to do this about four, and now the piston cylinder will be right, right about this height. So I'll bring that up, cut out a hole there. Now since this is at bottom dead center, I want the linear track piece all the way at the bottom. And since it's not going to go down any further from there, it'll be fine. Now for here, since I had a stroke of about 5, I'm going to put down 4 track pieces and 4 over here. And then put the track base there. Now I'm going to extend that, and then go to my merge tool. And make sure everything's merged up, and I don't know what happened there. Alright, so just fix that. 
and that's your basic uh, crankshaft and connecting rod done. So now what you can do is you can just build these cylinders around it. So I built these a little bit too close. Um, if you actually do this, uh, usually they have the eccentrics in the middle, so you could do it like that. But I just chose to do it like that. So the eccentrics on mine are going to be around here and here. So now just encase the cylinders with the blocks. And now to start on the eccentric. Now I'm not going to do an advanced centric or eccentric, but one that can actually move. It's way too complex and I'm not I, I don't want to deal with it in the tutorial. I've already filmed this once and I tried doing the advanced one, it, it didn't turn out so good. So we're gonna measure out about three blocks. And now to start work on the eccentric. So for this I'm just gonna take a rocket, place two right there, get a pipe and bring it straight up. Now at some point you want to go about maybe three-fourths of the way, maybe a little bit less, uh, two-thirds. Cut it right there, place the block, and do something like that. This little like curve track that it actually slides on with the help of the reversing lever. Now get a T-piece pipe. Now depending on what side the reversing arm is going to be on, um, I'm not going to do it on the left side, so this side is going to be a little bit longer, and this side is going to be a little bit shorter. So now before we can do anything on here, we have to ask to build the arms that go out here. So I'm just going to build a little base for that. So for the arms here, I'm going to get out some 1x4s try to see how far I can actually go down with them. Now there's about two blocks here that are left. I'll just fill those in. Now up here you can put some bolt carriers that like I use for the bearings and then just repeat that there again. Now if I've done this correctly the crankshaft should not collide with this but it might so let's go test that out. So I'm going to put a throttle piece and a battery for testing. Now when I hook up the logic, uh, only one of the pivots should be powered, it should be this one, and then connect that to the signal. Now ignore me jumping, uh, I binded my speak key to the spacebar, since it doesn't conflict with anything in the editor, so you'll see me jumping when I'm talking. So now if I increase the throttle, you'll see that the crankshaft does not collide with anything and it actually moves up and down. Now to actually get the eccentric working. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make a little bit of an arm. We're going to come out like this, get some rockets, and go across like this. Now this is going to connect to that. So what would happen is there would be a little lever here, or there would be a steam engine, like a smaller one, that could, they could use to turn this, which will in turn turn this. I said turn too many times. Uh, and it will actually switch the direction of the engine. Now, last step, we need to take some pipe, uh, move it up two, not two, just one. Like that. Now you could use a pivot and then a straight piece of pipe to do that. I don't really have the space for that since it's kind of designed awkwardly. But now to just to finish off the eccentric, I'm gonna copy it to the other side. So I'm gonna get my selection grid. And then connect that up again. And you could replace that with a block, you don't have to. And maybe these two. Alright, so if you're actually going to do this, um, do what I do on this one, where it kind of overhangs on here. 
That way you can actually get the another support arm here onto there. And like what I did here. But I'm not gonna fix it. Alright, so now the eccentric is done. Merge that to the engine. Now we need to expand the bed plate a little bit now. Put another bearing. I'm not gonna bother with the window piece. Since we're almost done with this. Now for the flywheel, I'm gonna make a simple circle. Like so. And then the flywheel is done. Now this is where your output shaft is going to be, so it's going to go to your prop. Or if you're just doing this on a ship, it's probably going to just go into a random wall. Now you can build these as small as you like. Um, if you're going to make them smaller, make the throw of the engine only about three. So only three blocks, so the journal would here, or be here. Actually no, journal would be here, and then this would be your center point. But that's not what I have on here. So now that's all done. And you could also expand the bed plate here, so that uh, the bed plate is basically just like an oil pan, like you have on a car engine. But it's also to hold the structure of it, and if you put oil into any of the bearings and it falls out, then it will all collect here instead of spilling all over the ship. So if I put power to it, you'll see that it will start to spin. Now if you wanted to go faster, you could uh, decrease the gear ratio on the thing, but that will use more power. And it won't have as much torque. But uh, that's it for this. Um, if you do actually build this, make sure to give it some detail. Don't leave it white. I'm not going to do it, as I'm not going to reuse this engine because I already have some. So if you uh, actually build this, make sure to have detail. And I'll leave some, or some links. You can download this to just look at it and learn from it. And then I'll have a link to my workshop page where you can download some of my own uh, Steam engines or just build your own. So I'll see you guys in the next video.